In this new video of the Lurge series, we're going to find out how to do the configuration. Let's get into it! So, we've gone through the design and the assembly of uh, the Lurge X on the Ender 3. Now it's time to configure it so that we can run it. The configuration of the Lurge X is, I would say, one of its uh, main assets. Uh, due to the fact that it's uh, very polished, uh, there is a configuration tool that you can run online with all the needed configurations. The good thing is, this is a multi-purpose uh, board, can be used for different kind of machines, so it doesn't come pre-configured and uh, you cannot load the parameters in the firmware. There is a configuration file that allows you to load the parameters in the firmware, which is very good because then you can run independently firmware upgrades and uh, keep the configuration as it is. Let's jump into it. Let's go to the computer and see how we can do this and get this done. First and probably more straightforward way of uh, configuring the Lurge is to go through this uh, to this web address. You will get the link in the description and you get to the Lurge configuration tool, which is actually a very well done wizard to go through all the configuration details. First one, language selection. That's very limited. You can either choose English or simplified Chinese. You can choose whatever color of the UI you want. So you click on the color you prefer and uh, then you can choose one. Let's go for this teal color and uh, and then you click on next. Next up, we go into the printer mode or related settings. You can choose between the XYZ, the Delta or the core XY. We stay with the XYZ because that's uh, our end three. Maximum travel distance of the X axis 235, maximum travel distance of the Y axis 235, maximum of Z, I would put 220, uh, that depends on the bit on your configuration. Then you can choose where is the origin, I will put minimum origin for, for all three. Uh, you can also choose a different origin point if you, if you like that. And then you have the minimum temperature for filament replacing. I will put 210 for this. And then speed of filament replacing. I would put 20 millimeters per second. And length of the filament replacing. I will put 20 millimeters. And then we will check if that makes sense. Then you can get to higher, to higher or other um, settings about the triggers of the switches. That is uh, maybe better to, to configure straight on the printer because you will see if the switch is activated or not. You can check it on my video how to do it. And you can also set an origin offset for the three end stops. Then you go to the next one, which is the stab value settings, which is a bit more juicy. Uh, this is all the information to get to the calculation and uh, we will go through this right now. You can do your calculation according to this method. Um, yeah, or otherwise you can just uh, go into Arduino IDE and then you can open up a Marlin configuration for Ender 3. You get the link to the description. In the description you get the link to a video where I went through it. And here you go into the movement settings sec section, which is this one. And then you have this one, which is define default axis step per unit. So this is for X, this is for Y, this is for Z, and this is for the extruder. We take note of these ones and then uh, we go back to our configuration file and we put 80 for the X, 80 for the Y, 400 for the Z, and then or 91.5 for the A1. For the extruder, you will have to do a calibration of the extruder to get it right. To get it right. You will also get a link to the description or procedure to do it properly. 91.5 is what worked for me. Um, using, using Marlin, I will go for the calibration once I'm finished. For the direction settings, if you already know the direction, you can put it uh, down here. Otherwise, very simple to change it in the large screen. So I know for the X axis, since I have my mod for the uh, stepper motor dampers, so this has to run on reverse. Then we go down more to the juicy settings of acceleration, speed limit, mutation speed and all the rest. There again, as a starting uh, reference point, I suggest you keep the ones from Marlin. So we go back to Marlin and we have uh, accelerations. This is ones I use, so 
max feed rate and max acceleration. So acceleration, I use uh, 1000 for X and Y, 100 for Z and uh, 5000 for E. So we go back in here and let's change those actually. They are already quite okay. I will lower this one and lower this one just to be on the safe side. Then we have limit speed. Uh, this is something you can fit in or not, uh, up to you. So uh, this will give a limit in case uh, you put in the slicer a uh, higher speed or a lower speed than this one. Mutation speed is the speed at which the machine will think that it can safely change uh, the direction. So if you take this one, for example, when the speed is as low as 10 millimeters per second, the direction of the axis is going to change. The higher you get, the sharper the corners, but the higher the vibration. So we will leave this as it is. Homing speed, this feel free to put uh, to put the value. I like the, my homing to go slow, so I'm going to put 20 on these ones. Next, next up we're for temperature. NTC 1100K is what most uh, printers is using, are using. So if you're not using a thermocouple, this is uh, your uh, normal thermistor. Minimum, maximum temperature. Uh, minimum temperature zero works well. Maximum temperature, feel free to put whatever you think is safe for your printer. We'll put 250. PAD, we're not going to change those. There is a PAD out tuning function, which is what we're going to use. If you have a second hot end, go ahead and set these ones as well. I don't. And for the heat bed, this is again, uh, same, same. So the minimum temperature is zero, higher temperature. I print uh, PETG every now and then and 80 works for me. So I put 80 as a te maximum temperature. I like to go above that. I know, uh, you know, if you're printing ABS, you probably go above 100. Um, just make sure you don't touch it because if you if it's more than 100 degrees, then you can you can burn yourself. PID not going to change that as well. Print and settings. This is very interesting because uh, there is preheat temperatures that you can pre-configure. So you can have PLA, ABS, and Custom One. This is single single touch uh, preheat that you can use for. Um, uh, your standard uh, printing settings. So I'll put 245 for ABS. I actually use ABS for uh, PETG. Custom, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to use it, so I'm going to leave it like that. Then I put 80 for the bed here. Again, I'm using it for PETG, even if it says ABS. This is very interesting and I use it very often. Next up, leveling. If you have a probe, you will go, you want to configure this. I have a probe. It is uh, uh, M18 uh, uh, normal inductive switch. Number of leveling points. I'm going to put three. There is no storage in this one, so this one doesn't really make difference. This is going to be used for if you have a servo-driven probe, uh, like for example the BL Touch. Probe is, also, is only used for auto leveling detection or also for Z axis minimum limit and, out, and auto leveling detection. I'm going to use it only for auto leveling. If you have an offset, you're going to set it here. Um, I know I have an offset here that is on the X axis of 48. Let me check that. The probe offset is actually the same as you're configuring it in Marlin. So let's go back down to Marlin and you have your Z probe options if you've set it already. So you will have, a if you have a fixed mounted mount probe as um, in my case, this is the offsets we're talking about. So there is an X offset of 48 and zero and zero on the other two. So I go ahead and put 48 on this one. After you've done that, you can generate your configuration file and this is going to be a text file that is going to be saved on your hard drive. So as soon as you save that, that's going to open as a text file and here's the explanation of how to use it. So you just uh, copy this on a, on a SD card and then you, you put it in the printer and you just go into settings, system, systems update, and then you go and search for your configuration file. This is exactly 
the configuration file that we have put together, so all the information that the printer needs to work with uh, our own settings. And uh, with that, this first uh, way of doing the configuration is done. I recommend this because that's the easiest way. You don't have to go and uh, fiddle with the touch screen, which is okay, but still, uh, you know, I prefer using the computer when doing this kind of things. And uh, that's it for this, uh, for this instruction here. So we fire up our printer and then uh, we go into the main menu here in the settings tab. And then we touch system and this up arrow here. It depends if you connect it through a USB or through a SD card. I have the SD card in and no USB. So that's why you see the tick mark here. So we go into the USB and we click the down arrow. We go into large X system. And then we go down into firmware and we go into large firmware 3.0.5 and we click OK and then we click update to execute the update. Update and here going doing your firmware update. Of course, make sure you're not going to disconnect power while the firmware update is running. That's very important and that's also why I'm not using it through the USB but I'm using the SD card. You never know what can happen to the other side of the USB. When that's done, the system will reboot. And uh, if you have also to update the UI, you will also get uh, another specific uh, update screen. I've already done it, so that's why it's not popping up on my case. And that's it. So that this is as simple as it is to update the firmware on a large X. So I said there's another way to update uh, all the parameters in the printer. So you just go into the small cogs here and then you click into structure. You have standard XYZ machine or Delta or core XY. So we click on the standard machine and then you have all the settings you've seen on the computer before. You can find them here as well. So travel space settings, you get the XYZ distance and then you have on position settings which is the same as the other one, change filament as well, software retract, and then you have in the advanced settings, the ohm offset, the end stops, and the auto leveling. Ohm offset, if you have any offset, end stop settings. Cool thing about this printer, you can just activate the end stops and you will see them moving. So here I'm clicking them, I'm clicking it, so you will see it's moving. And when I go to the Y, I click it and it moves as well. I don't have a Y, I, I actually have the Y as well here, not set the probe yet. Then if you click on the page, you can also have the trigger mode. So you go scrolling between the pages. Auto leveling, if you have an auto leveling, you can set it here. And that's it. So then you have the motors. Acceleration speed, step value and direction, same as you've seen in the screen out there. So you can do this exactly in the same way as you have seen on the computer screen. I just uh, only recommend to do it on the computer because I find it more convenient, but that's another way to do the same thing. So the next uh, and last step is to load the configuration. So we click again on the cog uh, menu. And then we go into system and then again on the up arrow, we choose the TFT card and then we go into large config, we click OK and then update. The configuration is now loaded and we are done. If we want before the next software firmware upgrade, for example, we go again into the cog menu and then we click this icon here and then we can export the configuration so we can save it for later use in case we changed it. So if you go into the configurations, we will see that the values we've set are all in. And then also in the motor, acceleration, for example, or speed, limiting speed, and then the stop value and everything else is fine. My next suggestion is to check that the end stops work well uh, before you know, messing with something and damaging something. To check that the end stops work, 
we just uh, move manually the axis so they are a bit uh, far away from the end stops uh, just to make sure we can uh, activate the switch manually uh, in case something is going wrong and then we touch the X icon for example I touch the switch myself the first time to make sure that it uh, works properly and then I just check that it does its job with no issues the Y axis is as well correctly ohming and then the X axis also works and that's it so we're done configuring the machine and we're ready to print to conclude I believe that uh, this configuration process is uh, very easy and seamless and it is in line with the design principles of the Lurge which is one to be a uh, multi-purpose uh, board that can be used for different kind of machines so that's why it's guided through the different types of machines and it doesn't come pre-configured and second it is targeted to an audience of people that wants to go uh, without at the hassle of being programmers or hackers or stuff like that so you don't need to go into Arduino you just get the very nice web interface and there you go that's it for today, so if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. There's also a small bell next to it, so you can get a notification when I publish new videos. And uh, that's it for today, so thank you for watching, and until next time.